Today I'm going to show you how to step up your transition game from looking something like just this with simple fades to looking pretty cool like this. Pretty cool, right? Stay tuned. We're going to cover it. It's very easy. It doesn't take a lot of time. And even if you don't know a lot about OBS, you can set this up as well. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna be updating and upgrading your stream and making it look better with the Move Transition plugin for OBS. Wanna go ahead and clarify, this does not work with Streamlabs, you will need OBS to use this. So simply go to the link in the description and download this plugin. And if you want to read the documentation on it, that's actually fairly well documented all the way down through here of how to set it up and other stuff that I might not cover in this video because I'm trying to keep you from having to watch a 15 to 30 minute video on something that you should be able to set up in about five to seven minutes. So awesome. Like, subscribe, all that cool stuff if you like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize this and let's talk about what you're looking at. Me twice because this is inception and just try not to let it confuse you too much. I'm recording in OBS. The reason I showed you that video at the very beginning is because it tends to be a little bit laggy in the preview window whenever I show this and record it. So you already know it's not that laggy, but just to go ahead and show you again, here it is live in OBS. You can see that we've got stuff that pops in for a game and then we can actually have stuff pop in like this and then we can even go back and it's very simple and easy to use. What you'll wanna do is go over to your uh, transition section and we'll add a new transition and we'll call that transition move. That's what we're gonna be selecting is the move transition. So if you had multiple versions of this, you can go ahead and rename it something different, but I'm just gonna leave that one move too. Inside of here, we've got a bunch of options so we can match sources, whether or not the sources are the same name um, with numbers removed from in blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of information in there you could use. Um, we can set up switch points, cache transitions, and even match nested scenes. And then the things that I like, right, is the matched items and appearing and disappearing items. The way I'm gonna describe this is matched items are gonna be things that are pers uh, persistent, right? Um, let's just leave that uh, save, fine. Yeah. Um, and go back to move. We'll go to the one that I've got set up. Um, Matched items are going to be things that are going to be persistent from one scene to another. So, for example, if I go from my cam scene to my cam with game, the cam nested scene, but we'll just say source, is in both of them. So we can set the properties of what we want that to do whenever we go from one scene to another if it's in the both scenes, if it persists. As you can see here... It actually doesn't move, so that's that's good. Now, things like this gameplay here would actually be an appearing item at this point. So this is an appearing item that is now gonna be added on screen, and we've actually got that fading in. And then we have stuff that's removed from the scenes. So like, for example, this right here is gonna be removed if I go back to camera, and it fades out in the bottom right-hand corner. Then we've got things like Game With Cam, of where both of these actually are gonna be on screen but I actually have this set up as um, a game camera with a border, and this is just game capture. So they're a little bit different. So try not to get those confused. It depends on how you set your stuff up. And this might make you decide you want to change stuff around and how you set up your scenes, and that's fine. Uh, you don't have to be near as chaotic as I have mine, but this is a system that works for me. Might not work for you, okay? Um, but you can see here that our camera is now moving, it is persisting and being in the same scene, but we need to also set up parameters for it for whenever it's moved, because it might be able to be an item that is in one scene and then goes to the other, but it also might be something that needs to move. And like I said, we'll talk about all those settings. So we've got the move sele uh, transition selected, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click these three dots and go to properties so we can see how I've kind of got mine currently set up. And I've got the switch points and everything set the same. And for matched items, we want to ease in and out, which that essentially means is we're going to ease in from the section it's at and then out to the location it's going to. It's not going to be just a move. It's going to be like a, oh, we're moving. Kind of, kind of not slower, but it, it's a little more smooth. 
And then we've got easing function. Um, we can set that to a cubic uh, function of how it moves. Um, we can have it bounce. It can be elastic, quadratic. This just explains the exact motion in which something does move. Is it going to be a little bit more linear? Is it going to have more bounce to it? Uh, this is how you can switch that stuff up. And if we wanted to, we could actually even set a transition on top of it whenever it moves from one section to another. So if you wanted it to go from here but still move and fade during that process, you could do that. You could add a stinger onto it, whatever you want to do. But for the purpose of this video of keeping it simple to be able to still have something that looks really nice like this, I would suggest probably starting out with something like this um, and then figuring out maybe the ease if you want it to be a little bit different. I would actually probably normally go with uh, quadratic instead of cubic, but that's just what I've got it set to. Um, the transition scale type, max only scale to aspect ratio, but only to the maximum size of each source. So we're not gonna be scaling sources past their maximum size, essentially what we're saying, um, but we also have abilities to stretch or change aspect ratio. So if for whatever reason, I wanted to have my camera say um, from this one be full screen, but whenever we go down to camera with, um, from camera to game with camera, we wanted the camera to not only um, scale down in size, but we wanted to crop it. So say we wanted that um, camera size to actually cut off like right here and right here so I could have more room for the gameplay if I had my camera on top of the gameplay, as opposed to it kind of being an ultra wide kind of setup. You could do that as well and um, get your crop factor in there uh, for however you've got your setup. Then we've got appearing items. So these are going to be items, like we said a second ago, that are just going to kind of not be in one scene, but they're going to be in the next one, and we want them to appear. And then this is where you get into the uh, positioning of where you bring stuff in from. So you can set easy in and out, or ease in and out, and you could even change those if you wanted to as well to do no ease or just to ease in or just to ease out. Um, and we can set those to cubic. We can zoom those if we want. And we've got bottom right is what I've got selected because I want my stuff to come in from the bottom right. Nice. Um, if you had stuff that you wanted to come in from, say, the uh, top right or the bottom left and the top left, you can actually create other ones of these transitions and apply those directly to that um, item in that scene or directly to those scenes. You don't have to do that specifically just here in the move transition section. So like I said, definitely play around with this and figure out what works well for you, but we can do the same thing. We can also do a fade transition on that. And um, I like that. I like this uh, gameplay whenever I switch to it um, from here to fade in because it's coming out of nowhere and I kind of like that um, look to it. Then we also have what's called disappearing items. This would be the equivalent of me uh, clicking on cam again and then this disappearing and we can see that I basically got the inverse set up. I want that to fade out on the bottom right and I want it to fade. And like I said, I don't have a ton of stuff set up on my stream to where this is near as applicable um, for somebody that might have 10 or 15 different sources that they want to do this with. I personally just like the ease of, I only have one or two moving things, I'm only going to set this up once or twice, and it's going to work, and I apply it to the items that I have. It is very easy to use, it can take your stream, like I said, pretty much to the next level of just bringing in, um, like, let's show this again, like just bringing this in just looks so much cleaner on stream, and being like, yeah, we're going to bounce around and have all this cool stuff and kind of spicing up the transitions as opposed to just covering the screen or just fading back and forth between each one, kind of like I'm doing right now for this video. But you know, for the context of this, this is obviously fine for me, but for your live stream, it's really something to help set you apart. And like I said, it's very easy to do. And I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching like subscribe, all that cool stuff. We've got some other videos coming related to, um, it looks like OBS and Streamlabs. We're going to be doing a comparison um, and even some alert style stuff for kick.com for those of you that might be interested in it. And even my top five favorite OBS plugins, um, just a sneak preview. This is actually one of them, um, but there's going to be four other awesome ones that we're going to talk about in that video and even ultimate versions of Streamlabs desktop and the ultimate OBS studio guide. So we're going to be covering that again, where we cover absolutely everything in the vanilla version of OBS Studio. And uh, yeah, be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out this video here. YouTube says you should like it. So uh, go ahead and try that and subscribe over here if you haven't already. Thanks for watching all that cool stuff. Um, see you guys later. Bye.